Hey, you want a drink that looks like baby vomit? Great, there's a cocktail out there for you. What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video. And today I want to talk about the top 11 worst cocktails that are ordered. Now, when I say worst cocktails, I'm not talking about that one time you went to a bar and ordered a margarita that's on the menu and you see them grab that rose's lime juice or some random person's recipe on an 11 year old GeoCity site. I'm talking about real drinks that people actually order. These drinks are so bad that even when they're made with the right proportions and with the best ingredients, they are still horrible. Screwdriver. This is one of the most commonly ordered drinks. Why is it on this list? Because most people have horrible palates. People also like to mindlessly order drinks that are popular. If millions of people are drinking it, it must be good, right? So what makes it so bad? First, you start off with orange juice, which by itself, especially if it's fresh squeezed, it's amazing. But if you start off with something that tastes amazing right from the start and you add some vodka, which tastes like nothing, you completely ruin the orange juice because you're diluting it. A Greyhound, on the other hand, is actually a much better drink, even though they're very similar. Because grapefruit juice is so bold that adding a little bit of vodka just softens the juice rather than silencing it. Muddled Mojito a little bit of history behind the mojito. It is actually derived from another drink known as the mint julep. A mint julep is um, mint, sugar, and bourbon. When you muddle the mint in a mint julep, it bruises it and causes it to release an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase, which causes the mint to bruise and turn bitter. And you've probably seen like bruised fruit that are uh, brown. That's what causes it. Bitterness and sweetness are complementary flavors. So by having the bitter mint and with the sugar, you actually have a balanced cocktail. The mojito is not just based off of the mint julep, but also another drink called a daiquiri, which is a type of sour. That is a spirit, which is the rum, a sweet component, the sugar, and a souring component, which is the fresh lime juice. So even though it's a combination of both a mint julep and a daiquiri, when you use mint to make a mojito, you're only asking it for its aromatics, and you do not want to add any bitterness to the drink. All you really need to do is to agitate the mint inside a glass, maybe with the back of a spoon. Then you can add the lime, the rum, and the sugar. If you do muddle the mint, and even worse, if you muddle in lime wedges, the bitter mint plus the bitter lime essential oils will offset the sweet and sour balance of the drink. Tequila Sunrise just like the screwdriver, this drink doesn't work because orange juice has a very subtle flavor and adding tequila will squash it even more so than vodka. And to make matters worse, you're even adding the roses grenadine to it, which is just red colored simple syrup. So not only do you have the tequila silencing the orange juice, you're also making it cloyingly sweeter without balancing it with some kind of acidity. Blood and Sand what happens when you add orange juice to a Manhattan? You basically get the blood and sand. Once again, I'm not a fan of orange juice in cocktails because it's such a quiet ingredient. But now you're gonna to have to deal with more powerful flavors like scotch. And compared to the screwdriver or tequila sunrise, you're even using less orange juice, so it makes it more unnoticeable. This drink is from 1922, and how it stood the test of time is beyond my understanding. A better way of making variations of the drink is like the screwdriver, you can use grapefruit juice instead, as a grapefruit juice can withstand the loudness of the scotch. Or just skip the orange juice and just make a fancy stir. Rob Roy variant. Kamikaze. Ever go out with the boys and you just think to yourself, you know what, let's start off the night with a round of Cosmopolitans. Probably not, but guess what? That's basically what a kamikaze is. Cosmo is vodka, lime, triple sec, and a splash of cranberry for color. You take that cranberry out, you basically get a kamikaze right there. Adios. The name of this drink implies that if you drink it, you'll be knocked out drunk. And adios. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but the drink is just a Tom Collins with blue curacao. Yes, there's four types of spirit, but when you add those, they still just add up to only two ounces, which is just standard pour for a whiskey drink. The next time you want to get buzzed, order an old fashioned or a Manhattan. Not only will you get a better drink, you also won't look like an idiot. The aviation. This classic cocktail is split between bartenders. They either love it or they hate it. It's essentially a gimlet that smells like flowers and twigs. The drink itself isn't unbalanced or anything, but when you're dealing with both the maraschino liqueur and creme de violet, both being so loud, it's like wearing two types of perfume. Combining these two strong floral liqueurs just squashes the botanicals of the gin, which is the base spirit and therefore should be the star of the show. French Martini. You know what goes well with pineapples? Raspberries. Said no one ever. Not only is it not a martini, which is a spirit for cocktail, this drink isn't even French. A splash of French liqueur doesn't make it French. On top of that, the drink is so sweet. If you're gonna add a component like Chambord, at least counter that sweetness with some lemon or lime juice. Muddled old fashioned.
Hey, you want a drink that looks like baby vomit? Great, there's a cocktail out there for you. On top of the horrible visual effect that the drink gives off, the technical aspect of making the drink is also one of the worst ways to make a cocktail. But before I start this rant, I want to go over the history of the Old Fashioned. The Old Fashioned is short for Old Fashioned Whiskey Cocktail. Even though these days we kind of refer to all mixed drinks as cocktails, a long time ago, Cocktails were a class of mixed drinks that was actually had a definition, and that was defined as a spirit, sugar, water, and bitters. The first whiskey cocktails were actually made with hot water, and when ice readily became available, that's when the water component uh, was changed. Fast forward to air travel, you have Americans having access to exotic fruits like pineapples and maraschino cherries. People wanted to up the ante for their whiskey cocktails, so they would grab these exotic fruits and mull them into the drinks to uh, try to impress guests. However, like with any changes, to tradition, you always have this older crowd who aren't so impressed by these new gimmicks. So when they went to a bar and ordered a whiskey cocktail and they see the bartender grab a piece of fruit, they would stop them and say, hey, 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 I just want the old fashioned way. So that's basically the gist of the history of the old fashioned and how the muddled fruit component got involved. On the technical side, what's wrong with the old fashioned that's muddled? First, sugar cubes cannot dissolve in alcohol, especially when it's cold. It needs to be dissolved in some kind of liquid solution first before you add the alcohol. Otherwise, all the grains of sugar just sit on the bottom of glass. Second, it's too sweet. Most places that you see um, that make muddled fashions, they use these bright red maraschino cherries that are typically used to top off sundaes. To clarify, these are not real maraschino cherries. Real maraschino cherries are made of marasca cherries in Croatia, which is how it gets its name. These fake maraschino cherries are made of sweet cherries marinated in a brine of sulfur dioxide and calcium chloride to bleach the fruit, then soaked in a suspension of red food coloring, syrup, and other chemicals. The combination of these muddled components mean the drink is full of chunks of this cherry corpse and undissolved sugar that is settled at the bottom of the glass. So that means you'll get an overly sweet and grindy finish, and none of the ingredients will ever be fully incorporated into the whiskey. Mudslide. These are very popular in a lot of restaurants in certain parts of the United States. And in the places where they're popular, they are really popular. But what makes it so disgusting? Well, let me ask you a question. Would you ever ingest heavy cream that's never been refrigerated? Guess what? That's one of the ingredients that goes into a mudslide. Ingredients are vodka, Kahlua, Bailey's cream, and ice cream. This drink is just chemicals and calories. A standard mudslide at TGIF has the following. 740 calories, 26 grams of fat, and 86 grams of sugar. That's almost four days worth of sugar in one serving. I understand that alcohol itself isn't very healthy, but this is just diabetes in a cup. And the number one worst cocktail ordered is... Cue the drum roll. The Dirty Vodka Martini. This literally is the worst drink ever made. You ever drank a glass of salt water and thought to yourself, this could taste even better with a little alcohol in it. Despite being so disgusting, it's also one of the most popular drinks ordered. And I don't know why. Even if you've never heard of the other 10 drinks I talked about earlier, you're probably still aware of this drink. And the th weird thing is, I don't think there are any fictional characters that drink this cocktail. So why are people ordering it? Are there people who actually think this tastes good? People send back food when it's too salty. This drink is literally just alcohol and salt. Okay, I'm sorry if you're a dirty martini drinker and that I might have offended you, but you might want to reconsider some of your lifestyle choices. Well, that's the video for today and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to check out something similar, uh, please click on this. And if you haven't done so, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.